you call me teacher and Lord, and you say well, for so I am. John chapter 13, verse 13. Our Lord never insists on having authority over us. He never says, you will submit to me. No, he leaves us perfectly free to choose. So free, in fact, that we can spit in his face or we can put him to death as others have done. And yet, he will never say a word. But once his life has been created in me through his redemption, I instantly recognize his right to absolute authority over me. It is a complete and effective domination in which I acknowledge that you are worthy, O Lord. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 It is simply the unworthiness within me that refuses to bow down or to submit to one who is worthy. When I meet someone who is more holy than myself and I don't recognize his worthiness nor obey his instructions for me, it is a sign of my own unworthiness being revealed. God teaches us by using these people who are a little better than we are, not better intellectually, but more holy. And he continues to do so until we willingly submit. Then the whole attitude of our life is one of obedience to Him. If our Lord insisted on our obedience, He would simply become a taskmaster and cease to have any real authority. He never insists on obedience, but when we truly see him, we will instantly obey him. Then he is easily Lord of our life, and we live in adoration of him from morning till night. The level of my growth in grace is revealed by the way I look at obedience. We should have a much higher view of the word obedience, rescuing it from the mire of the world. Obedience is only possible between people who are equals in their relationship to each other, like the relationship between father and son, not that between master and servant. Jesus showed this relationship by saying, I and my father are one. John chapter 10 verse 30. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered.
Hebrew chapter 5, verse 8. The Son was obedient as our Redeemer because He was the Son, not in order to become 